Procurement Confirmation Wizard is a built-in function in SAP Business One that assists you in automatically creating one or several procurement documents, such as purchase quotations, purchase orders, or production orders directly from one or several sales documents. Procurement documents created using this function can include part or all of the items from the base sales document or documents. However, you cannot use the procurement document confirmation function to assign items to existing purchasing documents or as a tool to guarantee sales order fulfillment by reserving items in the warehouse. With this function, we will see these examples. Consolidating multiple sales orders into one purchase order, creating a purchase order directly from a sales order, consolidating multiple sales orders for production, and lastly, creating a production order directly from a sales order. Let's get started. For our first example, we're going to be consolidating multiple sales orders for purchasing. You can consolidate multiple sales orders into one single purchase order. This may be valuable, as an example, if you receive several sales orders for certain items and you in turn want to purchase these items in one single item order from your vendor to save on shipping costs or obtain a quantity discount. For this, we will navigate to Main Menu, Purchasing AP, and click on Procurement Confirmation Wizard. The Procurement Confirmation Wizard window appears. Click Next. In the Customer window, choose Add and specify the customers for whose sales orders you want to create the purchase order. You are able to select from a range of BP codes, from and to codes. Differently, you're able to use customer groups or even properties. In our case, we will use the customer group All. To be able to create purchase orders for all open sales orders with unfulfilled purchase quantities for the selected business partners, select the Include All Open Sales Orders checkbox. If you do not select this checkbox, the only sales orders displayed are for those for which the Procurement Document option was checked on the Logistics tab of the sales order, or that use a dropship warehouse and have unfulfilled purchase quantities. Select the sales orders for which you want to purchase items for. Click Next. The Sales Order Line Items window appears. With purchase orders selected as the target document, by default, the quantities for the selected items are the quantities from the sales order or sales orders. If required, change the quantities for the purchase order. If an item has a preferred vendor assigned to it, this vendor is already entered in the line. If required, change the vendor code. For all items that do not have a vendor assigned to them, enter a vendor code. To specify the same vendor for all items, enter the vendor code in the vendor field of the wizard body. To specify the vendor for each item individually, Enter the vendor code in the vendor or vendor name column of the table. To save the purchase order as a draft, select Create Draft Document checkbox. Now that we verify that the vendor information is selected for each row, click Next. In the Consolidations window, specify whether to consolidate several sales orders into one purchase order and which consolidation options to apply. To create one purchase order per sales order, choose No Consolidation. The documents are grouped by vendor, that is, one purchase order is created per vendor. If you would prefer to consolidate several sales orders into one purchase order, choose Consolidate By and select a relevant option. Specify the system response to errors that may occur in the document generation process. If an error occurs, you may skip to the next vendor or stop execution. We'll select Skip to Next Vendor. The Preview Results window appears. It displays all purchase orders that will be created, group by vendor, and the consolidation options you have selected. Here we can see multiple items for Acme Associates, Far East Imports, 
Lasercom, and Blockus Corporation. To generate the documents, choose Next. The application creates the relevant documents and displays a summary result reporting of all documents that were created and any errors that occurred. Here we have procurement confirmation generation, the documents number 1284, 1285, 1286, and 1287. Here we have multiple lines per vendor. Here is an example. For our second example, we'll be creating a purchase order directly from a sales order. You have received an order from one of your customers and the ordered goods are not in stock. You want to create a purchase order directly from the sales order to buy the goods from a vendor. For this, we're going to navigate to Main Menu, Sales AR, and open Sales Order. We will navigate to the sales order in particular. Here we have a Maxitech order for a JB Office Print 1420. Currently, this particular item is being sold from Warehouse Bin Warehouse. Currently, we also do not have this in stock. Verifying the Logistics tab, checking the billing and shipping information. Once we're certified of our ship to and bill to addresses, we will want to select Procure non-drop ship items. This initiates the Procurement Confirmation Wizard, which allows you to create the purchase order for the goods that are not in stock. A system message requests us, do you want to update the existing table rows? We will say yes. By going back to the contacts window, verifying the item code, quantities, and prices, if you're satisfied, click update. The item availability check informs us that we have no available items for the sale. We'll click OK and click Update again. The Procurement Confirmation Wizard window appears. In the Customer window, the relevant customer is displayed and selected. If required, specify additional customers for whose sales orders you want to create purchase orders. To be able to create purchase orders for all open sales orders with unfulfilled purchase quantities for the selected business partners, select the Include All Open Sales Orders checkbox. If you do not select this checkbox, the only sales orders displayed in this window are for which the Procurement Wizard option was checked on the Logistics tab of the sales order or that use a dropship warehouse and have unfulfilled purchase quantities. Click Next. In the Sales Order window, all open sales orders for the selected customers are displayed. Select the sales order or sales orders for which you want to purchase items for. In our case, we would only want the order for $11.95. By clicking Next, the Base Document Line Item Windows appears. Select the target document type, Purchase Order. By default, the quantities for the selected items are the quantities for the sales order. If required, change the quantities for the purchase order. If an item has a preferred vendor assigned to it, this vendor is already entered in the line. If required, change the vendor code. For all items that do not have a vendor assigned to them, enter a vendor code. To specify the same vendor for all items, enter the vendor code in the vendor field of the wizard body. To specify the vendor for each individual item, enter the vendor code in the vendor name or vendor column of the table. To save the purchase order as a draft, select Create Draft Document checkbox. Otherwise, click Next. In the Consolidations window, as we've seen before, if you like to create one purchase order per sales order, choose No Consolidation. If you like to consolidate several sales orders into one purchase order, select Consolidated By and select the relevant option. As we are only making one purchase order, we're going to click Next. The Preview Results window appears. It plays all purchase orders that will be created group by vendor in the consolidation options you have selected. To generate the document, click Next. The application creates a relevant document and displays a summary report of all documents that were created and any errors that occurred. Here we have Procurement Document 1288, which relates to the order 1195 from Mexitac. By right-clicking the document and selecting Relationship Map, we're able to see the direct order from Sales Order 1195 to Purchase Order 1288. For our third example, we'll be consolidating multiple sales orders for production. In the system, we have several sales orders for items that we want to produce in our company. As an example, by navigating to Sales, 
and clicking on sales order, I'll bring up our last order. This particular PC, item code P10002, it's an item that is defined as a bill of materials. And our intent is to consolidate these multiple sales orders into one single production order. For this, let's close the bill of materials and the sales order and navigate to main menu, production, procurement confirmation wizard. When clicking procurement confirmation wizard, the procurement confirmation wizard window appears. Click next. In the customer window, choose add and specify the customers for whose sales orders you want to create a production order. You're able to select from a range of business partner codes from and to. You're able to use customer groups and also properties. Select the relevant option. In our example, we're going to select all customer groups. To be able to create production orders for all open sales orders with unfulfilled purchase quantities for the selected business partners, select Include All Open Sales Orders checkbox. If you do not select this checkbox, only those sales orders are displayed for which the procurement document option was selected on the Logistics tab of the sales order, or that use a dropship warehouse and have unfulfilled purchase quantities. Click Next. Select the sales orders for which you want to produce items. Click Next. The sale order line item window appears, with production order selected as the target document. All bombs are displayed. Select the bombs that you want to produce. By default, the quantities for the selected items are the quantities for the sales orders. If required, change the quantities for the production order. Click Next. In the Consolidations window, specify whether to consolidate several sales orders into one production order and which consolidation options to apply. If you want to create one production order per item, choose No Consolidation. If you like to consolidate several sales orders into one production order, choose Consolidate By and select the relevant options. Item, which is a system default, the documents are grouped by the item, that is, one production order is created per item. This setting cannot be changed. You can further specify additional grouping criteria, such as delivery date or shipping type. As a note, if the item lines have different distribution rules or project codes, a separate production order will be generated according to distribution rule and project code. For our example, we're going to uncheck the other option and leave only consolidated by item and target series, as defaulted by the system. Specify the system response to errors that may occur in the document generation process. To do so, make a selection in the If an Error Occurs field and choose Next. The Preview Results window appears. It displays all production orders that will be created, grouped by item and the consolidation options you had selected previously. To generate the documents, choose Next. The application creates the production orders with the status planned and a due date that is determined by the lead time of the production items. It displays a summary report of all documents that were created and any errors that have occurred. In our example, the system provides the information that the valuation method for a non-inventory item must be standard. This particular item is found on line 11. This must be corrected prior to releasing the production order. The production orders are available in the golden arrows. Here we have the production order number 155, 156, 157, 158, 159, and 160. In our fourth and last example, we'll be creating production orders directly from sales orders. To support a demand-driven production approach, in which a product is scheduled and built in response to a confirmed order you have received from a customer, you create a production order directly from a sales order. Similarly to creating a purchase order directly from a sales order, in this case, you have created a sales order according to the following procedure. Navigate it to Sales AR, click on Sales Order. In our case, we have, for microchips, two PCs. In the Logistics tab, we want to make sure that we have Procure for non-dropship items. The system will ask us if we want to update this table rows. 
we want to say yes. By clicking Update, this initiates the Procurement Confirmation Wizard, which allows us to create production order for the goods that were ordered. The system is also telling us that we do not have, currently, those items in stock. By clicking Update, it goes to the second row and tells us we also don't have these items in stock. By selecting OK and clicking Update, we now see the Procurement Confirmation window appears. In the Customer window, the relevant customer is displayed and selected. If required, specify additional customers for whose sales orders you want to create production orders. To be able to create production orders for all open sales orders for the selected business partners, select the Include All Open Sales Orders checkbox. If you do not select this checkbox, only those sales orders are displayed for which the Procurement Document option was selected on the Logistics tab of the sales order, or that use a dropship warehouse and have unfulfilled purchase quantities. Choose Next. The sales order window displays all open sales orders for the selected customers. Select the sales orders for which you want to produce items. In our example, we only have one for microchips, $11.99. Click Next. The sales order line items window appears. Select the target document type production order. All bombs are displayed. Select the bombs that you want to produce. By default, the quantities for the selected items are the quantities for the sales order. If required, change the quantities for the production order. Click Next. In the consolidation window, specify whether to consolidate several sales orders into one production order and which consolidation options to apply. If you want to create one production order per item, choose No Consolidation. If you like to consolidate several sales orders into one production order, choose Consolidate By and select the relevant options. Item, which is a system default, the documents are grouped by the item, that is, one production order is created per item. This setting cannot be changed. You can further specify additional grouping criteria, such as delivery date or shipping type. As a note, if the item lines have different distribution rules or project codes, a separate production order will be generated according to distribution rule and project code. To generate the documents, choose Next. The application creates the production orders with the status planned and a due date that is determined by the lead time of the production items. It displays a summary report of all documents that were created and any errors that occurred. In our example, the valuation method for a non-inventory item must be standard. This must be corrected in order to generate the production orders. Now that we have corrected the valuation method, we are able to create the production orders. Here we have production order 161 and 162. To best fit different use cases, you can decide whether to open the Procurement Confirmation Wizard for lines related to dropship warehouses, lines related to non-dropship warehouses, or both. Procurement Confirmation Wizard is just one example of how you can better utilize SAP Business One to help you perform your daily workflows more efficiently and easily. Join us as we help you learn more about SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notifications bell so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.